try to reason with somebody that has a delusion, forget it. It's not going to work. Um, because by definition, a delusion is something that's it's, it's just it's stuck on their minds. It's the first thing on their mind all the time. They can't get it off their mind. Interesting thing about delusions, we should, we'll have a talk at some point on psychosis too, and, and I'll discuss this then, but when you treat delusions with medication, what happens, the reason, you know, the way you know that you're helping with the medicine is not because the delusion goes away. Typically they continue to feel or to be a little bit, at least to think that that really did happen. Let's say it's somebody, somebody was after them, okay? Or let's say somebody had an affair, a spouse had an affair, or something like that. They still believe that that happened. But it's not the first thing on their mind all the time. It's not like they're talking about it all the time, they can't sleep because of it, things like that. You know, that's how you know the medicines are working. So I think a lot of folks think, well, you should take it all away and the person ought to never have that thought again. It's probably not, because now it's in your memory. My mom had a, she had a type 1. Mm -hmm. She had an episode where she was, she was identifying certain people while she was at the hospital and saying, well, there's your cousin. All the people, none of the people even looked like who she said they were. Right. There's your cousin Rick. He's a 20 year old guy, but she's pointing to a you know, man maybe 75. And there's, right. That that goes with it. Yeah, it can. Yes. I mean, that's that's a form of psychosis. You know, that, that the person is thinking something to be true that isn't. Um, so yeah, it can. Don't you think it's hard for families sometimes to accept? Like you said, you know, if they've known you a certain way your whole life, say, say your husband or your kid, right, and then you're diagnosed, and the family says, "No way." You know, I mean, you know, this has been you all these years, right? Uh, I think it's hard. I think it's hard on family. I think it's very hard. On family. I think so. I think so. I think. I think the way that's the hardest is if it's like a type 2 kind of thing, you know? Because when the family sees mania, I mean, if, if Grandpa goes out and buys two, two trucks in one day, everybody knows something's wrong, right? I mean, I don't care. Anybody in this room knows something. If, if somebody's preaching on the street corner or pointing to people on the, on the unit saying that's so-and-so, that's so-and-so, and they're not, everybody knows that's, there's something wrong with that picture, right? The hypomania thing, I mean, like I said, that's just Aunt Sally. That's just Aunt Sally. Well, so she gets depressed every once in a while. That doesn't mean she's bipolar. That's she's just depressed, you know. Well, the problem is, you know, you treat the depression with an antidepressant, and then you make them, sometimes it'll not necessarily make them fully manic, but it'll make them swing more, make the depressions worse, you know. Um, and you have to watch that kind of thing. And so it is hard on families. I think sometimes families... Sometimes they accept the diagnosis. Like yeah, that. yeah, and there's a lot of levels to that. Mm -hmm. You know, another level to why families have a hard time accepting it is because of all the stigma that they're yeah. You know, that means there's some genetic or some flaw in our genes or in our family that is a weakness or whatever else, you know what I mean? Instead of thinking about it like, you know, hey, so-and-so invented, invented something or did these, you know, was an excellent artist or thinking of the positives of it, they, we tend to think of all the negatives and stigmatize it, which isn't so good. I mean, we all have brains. We all have our brain, any of our brains and anybody in this room can have some type of mental illness or some type of, uh, I mean, we pushed anybody in this room hard enough and we can make them psychotic. You know, you can make anybody psychotic, you can make anybody depressed, it's just a matter of how much does it take. You know, we, if we put all of us through a certain amount of torture, not that I would do that, but let's say we did, you know, people would break, would get psychotic at, at different levels. Some people really early without too much torture, some people would take a lot, but at some point everybody gets, you know, it's just it's too much. The brain has, the brain just can't handle it. So that's, I guess if you think of it that way, then maybe we don't. Maybe we should not stigmatize people as much, you know, because it, it could happen to any of us, you know. So as soon as you're sure shooting, as soon as you say, "Oh, look at show and so and so, he's crazy," it could be you next next week, you know. What's the thyroid connection? Because I have read that a lot of people. Yes. Yeah. What's, I never understood that. I yeah, I should understand thyroid. So. Well, your thyroid is a gland in your neck, and it, it uh, secretes thyroid hormone. Yeah. And we all have to have thyroid hormone to survive. It, 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 it uh, uh, think of it sort of like, well, it's kind of a, it kind of gives you your metabolism, okay? So if you have too much thyroid hormone, your, your metabolism goes up. And, you know, the symptoms are just are exactly what you'd expect. Your heart rate goes higher, you know, you get hot real easy. Uh, you can eat, and, and now don't, don't anybody try this for some kind of diet, some, some kind of weight loss technique, but you can, t you know, some people have tried it, and it's not very healthy, but... You can you uh, you can eat and eat and eat and not gain much weight, um, and when your thyroid 
And so when they're, on the other hand though, when your thyroid is low, you know, everything slows down. You get dry skin, you get constipation because your bowels slow down, your heart rate slows down, you get depressed, and, and when you get, when you get, high, when you get uh, high in your thyroid, you can get kind of a lot of energy and maybe even anxiety, psychosis, you can have some of that. But when you get low, you get more of the, the depression. You know, your, your memory gets cloudy, and we talked about a low thyroid and Alzheimer's disease. It can look like Alzheimer's disease, too, um, especially in an older person. But the, th the, the link between thyroid and mood is just that. I mean, if it's too low, you can have more incidence of depression. One little interesting little thing about bipolar disorder, and this is kind of, this is, to me, it sort of fascinates me. I don't know why this is. But you can have somebody who's bipolar and who's swinging a lot of their moods, and you try medicine, 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 nothing seems to be working. And even though you check their thyroid and it looks dead on normal, if you treat them with a little bit of thyroid, sometimes it will help stabilize the mood when you use it with something like lithium or Depakote or something like that. I've had that work for me in, in, in a couple of patients where the thyroid seemed to stabilize their mood uh, over, what, uh, over what the lithium or the other medicines could do. Um, I find that interesting. And it's not that I made the person too high in their thyroid. They were still in the normal range or just right on the edge of the normal range, but I made them higher than they were. You know, and that may, for some reason, that affected their mood. There's, there's a lot of other psychiatrists that there's even some studies on that. So even with just plain depression, there are some studies with adding, uh, if you have an antidepressant, you know, this is somebody who doesn't have bipolar, just plain depression. So no ups, but just the downs. And if you add a little thyroid hormone, even if their thyroid is normal, you can boost the effect of the antidepressant and help them out of their depression. Um, so thyroid's a great question. Yes, thyroid, if, especially if somebody has bipolar disorder and their thyroid uh, level is abnormal, I thought I read some you got to treat that. That a lot, most bipolar or a lot of bipolar people do have thyroid problems. That, that it was common with bipolar, or maybe it's just... Well, <laughs> two things about, I mean, I, I, you know, the, the question is, is there some, even though it looks normal when you do the blood test, is there some abnormality? Is, it, is maybe the level normal, but the body isn't able to use it like it should, or something like that? That's one question. I don't know the answer to that. Um, because, you know, again, I'm saying, like I'm saying, some of these folks are normal when you check them, but when you add the thyroid, they get better. Well, something's going on. I don't know what. The other issue is lithium. If you're on lithium for a long time, it can lithium looks like iodine, right? And you know iodine is used to is used by your thyroid gland to make thyroid hormone. Lithium will compete with the iodine, and then some some uh, certain amount of people with lithium. Actually, a lot of people on lithium will sometimes drop their thyroid level down. It's not a permanent thing, and actually, you just use the thyroid medicine. You add the thyroid medicine to treat that. So that could be another reason that you're. Where another thing you read, you know, that a lot of folks that have bipolar disorder are treated with lithium and then their thyroid drops and that may be something else you're talking about. Okay. I've brutalized you folks long enough. It's 20, 20 after the hour. Yeah, thanks for uh, yeah, great questions. Another, another great session. You guys ask a lot of great things. I appreciate it. Uh, and we'll see you in January, third Tuesday of January. Uh, and we'll talk, uh, what are we talking about then? Anxiety disorders, I guess. We'll talk about anxiety disorders. Thanks, guys.